Well, hello everybody and welcome to Viral Vlog episode number eight. Week number eight into the um, global pandemic um, experience. Um, today is, I have to check, um, today is uh, Friday, May the 8th. And um, I always thought for some reason when this whole thing story really started that eight weeks into it we'd kind of have a sense of its shape and everything. And uh, I guess we do, so it seems as if it'll probably continue on for another five years to three months. Um, and uh, everybody hates the uncertainty, and I'm among them. But, um, you know, um, we're hanging in there. Uh, this week, um, there's been a lot of crazy construction going on on our street right before... Um, well, not right before, but about a month before the uh, coronavirus stuff really started, um, our street got uh, shut down for a uh, water main repair that they said was going to take until July, uh, and then they stopped working on it for a little more than a month um, because of coronavirus. And then Thursday, yesterday, at 7 in the morning, some guys bang on the door. They're back. Everybody's got to move their car. So now it's been clown town on the street and everything like that, and um, there's like um, backhoes pulling up and ripping things up and everything and uh, you can't park anymore and so that's another crazy thing that's going on in the block. Yeah, this week, um, well, it was Mandy's 44th birthday, so we're going to check in with her and see some of the things she got for her birthday and see um, about that. Um, we got our mail-in ballots, um, so I, I, everybody should sign up to get their mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania. We can do that. Um, what else? I've been working on my nonfiction writing um, a whole lot. I uh, haven't... I've, I've been making a lot of progress. I haven't gotten into the next chapter of the Charles Birchfield section. Then I'm going to do a section about the Sunwise Turn publishing. Then I'm going to, and that also will have to do with some of the tensions between the bookshop owners and things like that. Then Mary Mulberry Clark's husband runs off to England, and that's how book one is going to end, and it's going to be outrageously long. Um, and I, I've been working on a song, a cover song. I would like to share with you, uh, I'd like to show off some of my own, some prints of mine. I sold a few records through the mail and sent them, and that was awesome. I was complaining a little bit about sending things, about going to the post office, but please don't let that dissuade you from mail ordering things, because it's it's good to have some source of income, even if it's pitifully small. Um, so, you know, if you order an art print, um, you can go to my website, justinjur.com, you go to, um, sales, so you can order prints on there and stuff, or if you order a record off Bandcamp, you know, I go to the post office once a week, usually go early in the morning and it's not so crowded, so, uh, last week it was and it was ridiculous, but, um. Okay, so these are some of the, uh, prints that I have available. Actually, um, this is the only print that I have for sale on my website except for a really, really large one. And a lot of people don't like the large ones because they don't have that much space. But um, you can see about how big this is with my hand there. Um, and uh, this is a really high quality, fancy print. Um, that's the Brocken actually with the, the ghosts in there. And, um, and um, it's like on my website for sale for 120. Um, and the, each of these is signed and numbered. I haven't signed and numbered this one yet because I haven't sold it yet. But um, that's one I have. This one, I actually don't... This is the last copy I have of it, so it's not for sale on my website. But um, if you'd like a copy of this one, Time is a Place Where Your Motionless Light Remains is the name of it, uh, just send me, a, send me a message privately, and um, I can arrange for that. Uh, the large ones, they're up here, they're black and white, um, and they're, um, they're huge, they're like, you know, six feet long by, by, you know, two feet 
or uh, three feet tall or something like that. Um, but, you know, this keeps unrolling. It's quite big. Um, so there's that. And these are also um, signed and everything. Uh, so yeah, those are just um, the other prints that I have for sale. Let's get into some of these other things. Uh, first, I'll share my cover song with you I've been working on. It's a cover song of the Germs' Manimal. Um, I think the lyrics to that song are really great. Um, and I thought it would be kind of neat to do an acoustic version of it that brings the words out a little more and lets it breathe a little bit more than the, than the punk rock version. Um, we'll see Mandy's birthday presents. sleepy today. It's a gray overcast day. But I wanted to introduce a special section where Mandy shows you the presents she got for her. Ferdy, wake up. You're falling asleep, sweetie. Oh, sorry. For her 41st birth 44th birthday. I have trouble counting. Okay, sweetie. Let's see what Mandy got for her 44th birthday. 44 is Mandy's lucky number, and she just had her 44th birthday um, on May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. And we're going to see 
some of the presents she got. And then what else are we going to do, Ferdy? Oh, we're going to show you mail-in ballots. We hope everybody got your mail in. Ordered your mail in. Wake up, sweetie. Come on, you got to do the intro for this section. We hope everybody got their mail-in ballots, and we're going to show you our mail-in ballots. I can't have voting because uh, I'm going to be asleep. Okay. Well, that's terrible that you're going to sleep through the election. Me and Mandy are going to be awake, and we're going to do our mail-in ballots. Okay, sweetie? All right, so let's see the birthday presents. Okay, well, um, that's one of the birthday presents. It Ooh. says, Happy Birthday. Right. Happy birthday to you. I got all these cards from wonderful family members mostly and um, some friends too. Look at that beautiful one. Um, Who's that one from? That's from Naz Green. And this is an excellent one from you know who. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> That's Scoople and Ferdy. I recognize those guys. <laughs> um, and um, one present my dear friend Nazarene gave me is um, this these um, joint and body pain supplements. And boy, was that great. And um, also I got this fur from Nazarene. <laughs> And this sushi puzzle, <laughs> which I'll do eventually. Um, I am not actually quarantining. I go to work every day. Um, not every day. Yes. Well, not Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, so I don't have a lot of time for things like that right now because it's crazy time for gardeners. But um. Eventually, like in the winter, I'll do that sushi puzzle. Or maybe if I get COVID, I can do the sushi puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not... Um... If I am well enough. My mother gave me these books that she has. Aren't Whoa. they great? And Justin... Oh, oh and a um, person um, named Aisha who runs Wildflower Wellness Center gave me this hibiscus flower essence good stuff check out her business wildflowerwellness.center she's a student in the building your home apothecary class and um from justin i got this mega amazing birthday present with all kinds of luxurious bath and body things, a comb, um, conditioner bar, bath, salts. Oh my God, I'm in heaven. And these were made by a friend named Wendy who just started during this pandemic, a business called Darby Creek Hive. Um, and is selling all this fabulous stuff. And um, including this, but I don't know what to do with this. It's very trendy right now. It's a face comb. You if know? anybody knows what you do with these, let us know. And um... Because you store a lot of tension in your jaw and forehead. Another... <laughs> or so um, I've heard. Gift is, I don't know if I do. But. I don't know if I can get this, but I got a song in the mail. I mean the email from Kelly and Emily made um, songs. So hold on a second. Oh my god, these songs are amazing. Ready? Yeah. Hurr, <laughs> 
there's like five of those songs <laughs> and it's awesome and then another, another musical gift I got is Ragdoll's Adventures in Animal Land oh yeah with and with with Magic Mouse when I first got the present I was like hmm, somebody wrote on with Magic Mouse on here and I was wondering about it I was like who's Magic Mouse I wonder yeah I'm gonna play the record later. Okay. And we'll meet. Well, it turns out Rag we'll doll. see why. Yeah, Raggedy Rag Doll. Actually, Magic Mouse is like Raggedy Rag the Doll. Main person, the Raggedy main Raggedy Rag Doll. With Magic Mouse. It's more like Magic Mouse with Raggedy Rag Doll. Yeah. But... Raggedy Rag Doll, by the way, is not a copyright violation of uh, Johnny Gruel, um, Raggedy Ann and Andy. She's Raggedy Rag Doll. So, another thing I just wanted to tell you is um, that I learned how to make yogurt this week. So I've been kind of jealous of everybody's quarantine baking and fermentation projects. And Making I tried, loaves of bread that look like loaves of I bread. I tried to make loaves of bread even though I'm um, not really gluten tolerant and it causes me to have major mood swings. And <laughs> it was a tragic event. <laughs> when I baked the sourdough. So if anybody wants my sourdough starter, please take it away. But my friend um, Jess gave me a yogurt starter. It turns out you probably could just use a tablespoon of your own yogurt, uh, leftover from your store-bought yogurt, as long as it has active live cultures in it. Save a tablespoon at the bottom, get some whole milk. This is not vegan, I'm sorry. I don't know how to do vegan yogurt. It could be freegan if you find the yogurt. If you find the milk, <laughs> it's freegan. But um, just kind of like this milk is free for all. Oh, that milk that you're wearing? <laughs> this the fur. milk fur? Yeah. Um, it's vegan. I mean, freegan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm getting... Um, it's regan. It's Ronald Reagan's pelt. This, we actually skimmed Ronald Ew. Reagan, and that's disgusting. So anyway, um, <laughs> what you wouldn't wear a Reagan fur? Um, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, how you do this? Save a tablespoon of yogurt from your yogurt store bought, and then get some a whole milk, heat it up to about 180 degrees till it just starts to bubble, then let it cool until 115 degrees when you can hold your finger in it for 15 seconds like until uh, like it's bath water temperature and then um, pour the milk into the yogurt starter and um, swish it around and wrap it up in a bath towel or bath robe or blanket and put it somewhere warm overnight and in the morning Yogurt. Wonderful. Justin's making a face. <laughs> I like yogurt. Uh, do come to the plant sale at John Walsh Memorial Fountain tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. If you come early, you'll have more choices because the supplies are very limited this year. Okay. It's been a weird year. It's been a weird year. Um, oh, whoops. I shouldn't have told you my address. That's, I was just doing this so I could edit it. And, um, see y'all. That was great. We're gonna meet a new animal friend that we have this week. So, we saw Ferdy. We're gonna see Time Cube later and Schuylkill. But now, aside from Raggedy Ragdoll and Magic Mouse, who you'll meet later, we also have our new friend, the spider.
there's a lot of books I haven't shown off yet, and I thought I would show off a few books that had inscriptions um, that were inscribed to me, so they were special f for that reason. And this will also be a good opportunity to show off some um, creative undertakings by others, because um, I never wanted my vlog to become too narcissistic. So um, I have this amazing book called Alice, Memoirs of a Barbary Coast Prostitute, edited by Ivy Anderson and Devin Angus. And this book is really an edited uh, transcription of uh, a voice from the underworld. It was serialized in a newspaper. Um, yeah. 1913. Um, it's a really interesting book. Um, when we began researching the story behind A Voice from the Underworld, we were startled and delighted to discover that there was hardly a trace of it on the internet. Uh, particularly here in the tech capital of the world, in San Francisco, we were bombarded with the idea that everything worth knowing and doing is accessible um, through the colloquial touch of a button from a cab ride to a new romance. Um, we purportedly can find anything we want, and even more, in the massive data network. Take that away, however, and you open yourself to a different kind of possibility. The possibility of discovering something new, something not already accessible to anyone on the planet with an internet connection. Finding a voice from the underworld after hours holed up behind the screen of a microfilm reader is confirmation of this belief. Uh, there are hundreds of books about the history of San Francisco, a handful about the history of sex work in America at the turn of the 20th century, and even a few volumes on the history of the San Francisco Bulletin newspaper. But up until now, this unique document existed only on a few pieces of microfilm, thankfully archived in a library. It is in this analog world of fragile reels and dusty old equipment that the act of pure discovery still awaits, despite the pervading belief that everything has already been cataloged on Wikipedia. Um... So this was, uh, I could, I could certainly empathize with that, uh, feeling, uh, in my own, uh, research and everything, and I thought this book was, um, just a complete page turner of a book. It's, it's a, um, it's the memoirs of, of this, uh, San Francisco prostitute in the 19 teens that were serialized in a newspaper. There was a newspaper editor that became sympathetic to the plight, uh, and the cause of the, uh, sex workers who were at the time there was talk of them trying to unionize and stuff and um of course if you know the history of some of this stuff a lot of the uh women's suffrage activists were condescending to them uh to put it mildly i guess uh you know didn't understand why they couldn't just come come to their ranks and um you know that they had been corrupted and everything like that and it's an interesting bit of historical uh tension and everything so this is a great book um if you if you can see that if you if you check this out and when they came to philadelphia um oh it's the california historical society uh the publishers in in conjunction with um heyday books heydaybooks.com don't get things off amazon you can probably get a lot of these things from a publisher and stuff still um so yeah they, they have a little um i don't know if you can see but the uh the, tra the inscription, because um, I went and saw them do a book reading and stuff in Philly, it says, 3-20-2017, Justin, to fellow researchers and DIY historians, Devin and Ivy, cheers, DIY history. So I guess I had been telling them about the Herbert Crowley book, and of course it has some tangential connections, of, you know, same time period and stuff. Um, so yeah, this is a great book. You should check it out. Um, seek it out if you can. Dame Darcy, Meat Cake Bible. Um, this is uh, published by Fantagraphics. Um, she is a she's an amazing um, sort of uh, comics type artist. Um, super uh, imaginative um, work, you know. I can't give you too much of an idea of it without going through the whole book, but, um, yeah, look, she's got a pretty, pretty good, um, I guess they call internet presence, Dame Darcy, if you look her up. 
Um, and I went to see her do a uh, book release for this book. She played music. She plays the banjo and stuff. Um, so she's got best wishes to Justin, uh, Dame Darcy. Love Dame Darcy. She's got a little drawing of a mermaid on there. Um, so you should you should definitely get a copy of this book. It's a beautiful kind of art, you know, book. It's got its little, you know, uh, artistic um, embellishment. Uh, in the book itself, and, um, yeah, uh, it's got a New York Times, uh, review of Dame Darcy on the back, it says, meat cake will prevail, a luxury takes over America and the world beyond, um, so, yeah, this, this uh, yeah, the meat cake Bible collects all 17 issues of Dame Darcy's signature work from 1993 to the present, in addition to new material created for this collection, making this the definitive Dame Darcy collection, so, yeah, Get a copy of that wonderful book, the definitive collection, and then I don't want to get too long-winded here, but I have uh, I have this book, Vapor, Vapor by Max, also a Fantagraphics publication, uh, coincidentally or not. Um, the surreal existential graphic novel penned by award-winning Spanish cartoonist Max was an official selection of the and I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this Angulema International Comics Festival and a nominee for Best Work by a Spanish Author at the 2013 Solo International de Comic de, uh, de Barcelona. Um, now, uh, Max um, happened to be one of the few um, people who was hip to Herbert Crowley and uh, his comic strip The Wiggle Much, particularly, um, before the Herbert Crowley book was published and everything, and so he reached out to me at some point excited that um, I was working on publishing the uh, Herbert Crowley book and uh, he he did a little homage in this book to um, the Wiggle Much and Crowley uh, so here's his little Wiggle Much guy um, I don't know how well you can see him yeah you can see him um, in in Max's uh, book um, so yeah, um, and uh, and this book is beautiful. It's mysterious. He's got a really imaginative um, style. You know, I just think it's really. It's almost like when I was um, when I was fifteen or something. If I had stuck with my little comics experiments, maybe this is similar to the stuff I would have done or something. It's just got a lot of um, you know. I mean, look how look how beautiful this all is. You know, he's got this vanishing. Um, forest and when you get to the bottom it's just you know it's so so cool so um he sent me this book in the mail um excited about Crowley and everything and he did a nice little drawing for me on the cover it says to Justin and gratitude for his quest for Crowley Max so you can see and then he did this little this little guy here you know <laughs> so how cool is that um so you should check out this book for sure. It's called Vapor, and the artist is just merely uh, Max. It says in the in the preface, it says this book owes a debt to the Wiggle Much. Thirteen half-page installments that appeared in the New York Herald Tribune between March and June of 1910. The unique, well-known comic strip work of he Herbert E. Crowley. His character appears in the last vignette on page 90. So, very cool. We'll do one more of these. We got um, Prince Twins 7-7, his art, his life in Nigeria, his exile in America. Um, it's an amazing um, Nigerian artist uh, who, as the, as the cover tells you, he, he ended up um, coming to the United States. But um, this is a little... Um, uh, and this is Indiana University Press uh, published this book, so... Sometimes these university publications, they go out of print, and it is hard to get them from the publisher, but it's worth looking. You might be able to, to find a copy. But um, uh, Prince Twin 77 passed away, I believe, in, um, I want to say 2012. Of course, one could easily look this up on the Internet. But um, anyway, I know that he died a number of years ago, um, and I was lucky to... Uh, have met him at an art exhibit that he did at a place in Philly that shows self-taught art and stuff like that called Material Culture. 
I have a lot of funny stories about my um, adventures at Material Culture and stuff, but I would I think they would they would enter too much into the realm of um, stories that are probably best told uh, under the cloak of anonymity, if told at all. Uh, if if I wasn't telling this for public consumption, I could tell you juicy and really funny gossipy stories, but I won't do that. So, but this is Prince Twin Seven Seven artwork. Uh, really incredible stuff. You should look them up. Prince Twin Seven Seven with a little hyphenated. Uh, dash between the words seven, but um, anyway, I met him at this uh, art opening and talked to him a little bit, um, and uh, got um, an inscription, uh, which is very cryptic, um, but it's you know signature and a couple of um, you know marks that. Uh, yeah, it's not legible to me. Possibly not in English. Anyway, um, that's the signatory mark on the front. And then um, also um, the author. Oh, this is November 13, it looks like. So he must have died in 2015 or something. But anyway, also have that. So to Justin, all the best um, in the front there. Um, so, yeah, this is a great book if you can find it. Uh, hopefully you can find it elsewhere other than on Amazon or something. But, um, yeah, it's uh, Henry Glassie is the art, uh, author. Um, Henry Glassie provides a vivid and discerning examination of the life and art of Twin 77. The text is propelled throughout by a series of remarkable dialogues between author and artist, often personal, always scholarly. A compelling study of a contemporary African artist. This volume is wonderfully insightful and immensely readable. Um, and I, uh, I would concur. It's a, it's a, it's a good read. It's got a lot of great artwork in it. You know, there's a detail of it. So, yeah, those are four books that I have with little inscriptions and stuff. Um, I had wanted to. Oh, I had wanted to show off this book too. The art of C. G. Young. Unfortunately, not an inscribed copy, but, um, you know, the, that's, the psychologist C.G. Young really is a pretty impressive artist, um, though he never thought of himself as an artist and probably would have thought that his own art was, he didn't like this modernist kind of stuff. And anyway, there's a lot of funny contradictions with him as a person and personality, but um, without getting into all that, uh, there was a funny synchronicity, which is funny because Jung coined the term synchronicity with um, one of Jung's descendants, this uh, Thomas Fisher, um, who I got in touch with while I was working on the Herbert Crowley book. And of course, he he was working on writing this book, a, se a section of this book, The Art of C.G. Jung, uh, and I filled him in with more information about Herbert Crowley, so you can see that one of Crowley's um, well, sculptures made it into this book when they're telling the context of um, C.G. Young's artwork and everything. And then uh, I got, um, you know, in one of the in one of the footnotes. So yeah, there you can see the little um, footnote uh, here on page thirty. Justin Durr, Temple of Silence, Forgotten Works and Worlds of Herbert Crowley. Um, so yeah, that was quite um, cool to be footnoted. Uh, in that uh, in that book, um, and um, yeah, it's a great book. Um, Thomas Fisher was uh, helpful, very helpful in the uh, Herbert Crowley book. Uh, he got excited about the the Herbert Crowley project and um, helped me out with some uh, some archival research from the uh, the the Jung family uh, archives, which was which felt quite uh, special and cool to have a um, inside track on that. And the, the, the synchronicity, the story of the synchronicity with all of that will be uh, for, another, for another day. Maybe I'll tell stories of strange coincidences one day on my uh, vlog. But this is a great book. Um, if, you, um, if you seek this out, edited by the Foundation of the Works of C.G. Young, published by Norton. Norton, you can see there. Yeah, so you should uh, you should look that up too. Well, Skookle, I think we're gonna go say hello to Time Cube, 
And we're going to meet Raggedy Ragdoll and Magic Mouse. Say goodbye for Viral Vlog 8. Oh, you want to eat the camera. Okay. great vlog today episode number eight week number eight mandy's 44th birthday we met magic mouse and raggedy rag doll we looked at some books with inscriptions caught up on everybody so we'll see you next week and as always stay safe stay sane hang in there as they say and from the time cube and everybody else we will see you next week on week number nine of Viral Vlog. Say goodbye, Time Cube. Say goodbye, sweetie. <laughs>